At the far stony foot of the Khyber Pass, the frontier is ceremonial rather than defensive. It's open in daylight hours, and on the Pakistani side, the main weapon to keep the Russians out appears to be a Lee Enfield 303 rifle. The Afghans have their AK 47s, and while they were suspicious of us, they're pretty friendly towards the locals. There is much toing and froing, and it's only after a while that you realize more people are entering Pakistan than leaving it. They bring in vast burdens under the incurious eyes of the Khyber police. Sometimes the people are contemplating a long stay. The refugee traffic is discreet but constant. Nearly half a million Afghans have crossed into Pakistan and the flow does not appear to be slowing down. Their presence may be a political embarrassment down in Islamabad, but here the Pathan tribes straddle the border and there is nothing but sympathy for the Afghans. But of course business is business. So along the old wall sit the money changers, ready with Pakistani rupees, offered at a rate which is only slightly inflationary. Then the journey to the refugee camps begins, up over the pass in one of the most hostile terrains in the world. The idea of a Russian hot pursuit of Afghan rebels here is a nonsense, of course. The Khyber has always been its own defense and always will be. But the reality of the camps on the plain near Peshawar is harsh and inhospitable. There are only tents for protection against the chill wind and the cold mountain nights. Each head of family must weigh out his supply of wood for fuel. It's not much to burn through the long night, and it has to be used for cooking too. The latrines are behind piles of straw, and an old dog who's seen better days guards his master's tent nearby. There seems little but the consolation of religion. The mosque is improvised, a flattened mud floor, low mud walls. But it is a mosque, so the worshippers must remove their shoes. So the faithful pray, oblivious of the elders of the tribe, who use the mosque as a place to argue over living conditions. As well they might, for how long will they have to stay here, with the mountain wind blowing in someone else's country? Anthony Carthew, News at 10, in the Khyber Pass.